Steve here, good morning and welcome to what I eat my day vlog. So it's now 4.50 something AM. Um, I'm gonna go to the beach for a swim at sunrise and I always make a flask of tea. So I'm just boiling two liters of tea to go into this flask. Show sure, baby. Uh, so the tea I'm going for today is mint cacao roibosh. Really nice, we leave that brew. And uh, let me introduce you to my friend, this is Daisy. Daisy, come here, come here. This is Daisy. Daisy's coming down to the beach with us. Let's go to the beach. Uh, this is always my favorite spot when I come around the corner. I might let you see it, look. Uh, so in this vlog today, I'm gonna do what feeds my body, mind, and spirit. So here we go, it should be fun. Woo, let's have a good day. Uh, so here we are, we're down here at sunrise. You see the beautiful sunrise there. Gorgeous, and there's looking Daisy. And um, uh, this feeds my soul, always, to start the day like this. Anyway, right, swim time. Pretty beautiful day. Uh, Shawnee lent me his goggles. This is delicious. How many meters? I think it's only 200. Feels like a lot more. But uh, time for tea. Uh, so just out of the sea. It's glorious. Really, really nice. Did a bit of swimming today, and I'm having a cup of tea. Always find even the water's 15 degrees at the moment, so it's very warm, uh, relative to winter. Uh, but I always get the shake, so a cup of tea to warm up. Nice bit of sun, there's a load of us there having the chats. Great fun, glorious. Uh, great start to the day, and uh, let's have a great day. Cheers. Okay, post C, we're gonna go up and do a bit of training. This is the great Matt Jean. Daisy's up here, and Dave, and uh, a friend in Australia, I love functional mushrooms. I like shiitake mushrooms, turkey tail, reishi, chaga. So I'm gonna take a few little uh, droplets. Uh, and then there's always these, kind of got these cool ones with Aboriginal um, kind of little foods in them from lemon myrtle to lion's mane to Davidson plum to lavender, various kind of cool bits. So I quite like this. So today we're gonna have a little bit of chaga. So these are not magic mushrooms. They're called functional mushrooms. So they're, they're tinctures. And um, I really like it. I like a bit of fun of it. I think they're a great thing to start doing. I think I'm gonna go with, what do you think? So, essence of wisdom, calm, happy dreamer. My body's my, ah, shoot, let's go. My body's my temple today. Really. Let's try it. Let's aim big today. So what's in it? Yeah, right, this one we have echinacea, kakadu plum, and some chaga mushroom. Uh, so one food that we always, every morning we will, after the swim, come up and do some form of training. And it kind of changes with the sunrise. At the moment, sunrise is 5.13 a.m. to be precise. So generally swim till about, you know, and hang around and have the chats till about 6 a.m. Then we come up and we do a bit of training. This morning we focused on mobility. We did kind of back mobility, a little bit of handstands, a little bit of core work. And then generally we'll try to do some form of meditation. Um, no, but, but we did a Vipassana course years ago, so we kind of focus on sensation, something I find really kind of nice and gentle and calming. So uh, I think we only did about 15 minutes today. Daisy was pretty busy, but uh, it's lovely, such a good thing, good food for the soul. Uh, it's the most beautiful day here. The sun is shining, I'm down here at the Happy Pear. Uh, so we opened the bakery back about a year ago, so I'm in now to get some bread, for brekkie, some fresh sourdough. Check this out for crispy crust. Just gonna have a couple of slices because there's something so wonderful about a bit of hot bread before I go for a walk with my dad. I just love this bread. So this is an Irish organic spelt. So it's grown in Ireland. The flour is grown regeneratively so they don't till. And it just has this beautiful nutty flavor. I think there's so much to be said for the simple things in life like just hot bread with a crispy crust. Beautiful. Mm -mm -mm. Quite a deviation from an Irish uh, bread, but uh, Ross in the shop gave me a an organic mango. I think this is an Alfonso. But incredibly beautiful mango that has been sitting there for a few days and it's starting to get a few wrinkles. So I'm gonna enjoy it. Looks, doesn't look that great actually inside. Maybe I'm not gonna enjoy it actually. Yeah, it looks a bit bad. So let's give it a pass. Maybe we'll eat a little bit of it. Maybe we'll just try a little bit out. Actually, it's pretty all right. There you are, bit of mango. Mmm. I love being slightly caveman and just 
just hoeing into it. Oh, beautiful. Even though it's a slight citrus note to mm. it. So I'm meeting my dad for a walk, just to catch up in an old chat. I know. Um, and that's food for the soul. This is, this is pretty delicious too. Let's head for a walk. This is the great daddy. Hey. There's John O'Flynn. Hey. We're out for a walk. There's Daisy. And yeah. having the chats. I feel really lucky. Um, Mum and Dad live in our little town of Greystone, the same town. So, um, you know, I love going for walks with Dad and have a, or with Mum and just having the chats and just catching up and spending some time together. I think it's good food for the soul. Um, so now it's nine o'clock. Uh, I haven't really had proper brekkie now, so I'm going to make. Um, we interviewed Brian Adams, uh, singer, yesterday. Wonderful, such a great chat. He's been vegan for 30 years, and I was inspired that he tries to each day 50% of what he eats is uh, raw food. So it kind of reminded me I ate a raw food diet for probably a year, and over the years I've done lots of it. But um, it kind of reminded me the importance of eating more kind of raw fruit and veg. So I'm going to just have a load of fruit for brekkie with a bit of coconut yogurt, a bit of our granolas and uh, maybe some tahini. Uh, so here you go. Here's the main brekkie. So um, I've got some porridge, fruit compote, some coconut yogurt, some fruit and some granola. And then I'm going to make a fruit salad afterwards. Go with those bits. And one thing I always like to put in my granola is my granola. My kids all prefer Dave's granola. Yeah, my kids all prefer Dave's granola, but I gotta stay faithful to my own, <laughs> which is great. Uh, anyway, that's brekkie, which is cool. Delish. Here we go. And just being Irish, I find it hard to deviate um, from from porridge, even in summer. Like it's a really sunny day here. This is the garden. It's a really summery day. It's gorgeous, 15 degrees, but. I don't know, par is just, that's bracky for me, it's delicious, I love it. Well, one other story I had about porridge was um, in the Happy Pear, we've been giving out free porridge for, I'd say about 10 years now. Um, if you want to get porridge with nothing on it, it's free. And it's probably, I don't know how many, hundreds of thousands of bowls at this stage, but um, it's a cool thing to do. But, uh, I have bracky on my own today. Normally I have bracky with my family, but, um, my wife's Polish and they're all back in Poland at the moment so I'm enjoying spending a little bit more time on my own it's great I adore my family um, it's nice I guess as a parent to take a little bit of time just to um, connect back to myself oh look you'll see I built a tree house look let me show you this for cool look that's the one I built oh you can't really see right there that's the one I that's the one I built right here and that's the one that um, a friend built. But uh, yeah, all the bars. Oh, so here's, gonna, here's our here's our second course of a braku. Looks pretty nice. Yeah, I like the way it's dipping. Mmm, 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 mmm. You got variety. Mm. Here's lunch today. I have lovely tikka masala. I have some potatoes. Uh, this is some pink beetroot hummus, tea, uh, kimchi, and various different salads. And this is short grain brown rice, my favorite. So this is at the back of the happy pair here. We built this area here just now with COVID, just that there's an indoor outdoor area. And uh, there we are, lunchtime anyway. Into the studio, there's the wonderful Sarah Fawcett. Look at that. Uh, so snack time now. Um, healthy snack time. Yeah, healthy snack time. So I guess it's to get, you know, that sugar or kind of fat hit, but to try to get it in a whole food source. So we have goji berries, we have cranberries, we cashew nuts we've cacao nibs loads we're down here in the studio we're about to record a podcast this is the great shawnee cow there's oh, davy gravy it's great chat to strangers okay i love bean to bar chocolate um i could call myself a chocolate snob i think chocolate has as much nuance of flavor as red wine or coffee possibly a bold statement but i think the sense of origin chocolate often we consume, me included, when I'm tired, when I feel a little emotionally sad or lonely or a little down. You know, we all turn to chocolate for an energy hit. However, I think there's such nuance of flavor and I adore it. And a couple of years I got, maybe about <clears throat> two to three years ago, I got really into making bean to bar chocolate. And I've kind of visited lots of chocolate factories and adore it, it's such fun. So, for a little afternoon snack, uh, post trail mix, I'm gonna show you my bean to bar ch chocolate collection. So, I, like to always keep a little bag of chocolates and um, you know i'll go through phases where there'll be some months i'll have 
lots of chocolate and some months I'll have less. But when I do have this, these kind of fancier chocolates, typically one or two squares enough to satisfy the itch. And instead of just consuming it just for the fat and the sugar, you're actually trying to consume it for the nuance of flavor and to allow it to linger. A friend, Sean, described it as it's a bit like um, mindful chocolate consumption. Like this company, Saw Kiki, uh, which are based in Dorset, they put in all kind of the flavor profile. So it's quite fun. Like it's like rate the aroma, the nose, the body of it. What's the flavor? Is it is it number one, unappealing or five, revelatory complexity? Is it simple or is it intricate? Length of flavor? Is it number one? So it's so really, really fun. So I'm going to just go through some of my favorite chocolates at the moment. This is a really nice uh, vegan milk chocolate, 62%, so quite high cacao solids for that. Uh, it did win bronze in the chocolate uh, awards. Really, really lovely. This company here, Frizz Holm, based in Denmark, he won the chocolate uh, bean to bar chocolate awards with a couple of bars this year. And he's a cool bar here called the Bad Fermentation Single, be single Bean. So I typically like anything around between 60 to 80% in terms of cacao solids. So in America, it'd be called bittersweet chocolate. So just to show you this, Frizz Home one. This is really luxurious chocolate. So I typically take a small amount like that. And did you know that 70% of your taste comes from your nose, your olfactory glands. So when you're, or when I'm eating chocolate, I'll always, I'll pick you up now. So when I'm eating chocolate, I'll always, allow it to melt on my tongue, really coat the tongue, and then try to breathe in and try to get that oxygen circulating up to my nose. So you can kind of get into the nuance and the subtlety of flavor. So like, even if you read the pack here, you know, like a good, okay, with ripe plums and pleasant spiciness. So slight tobacco, we know, very luxurious, really smooth, like this must have been conscious for a long while, but mm, sorry if I'm teasing you. So I'll just show you some of the other bars now. So this one here is not a huge amount of a left called Crack Chocolate. This is a guy in Holland who makes beautiful chocolate. Really, really smooth. He worked in a number, he was a pastry chef in a number of Michelin star restaurants, so it's exquisite. It's a really nice chocolate. I, I wait for that one until I'm finished what I have. Um, I love this, this is Pump Street Chocolate. This was started by, so this lady, her father has an award-winning baker, a bakery, sourdough bakery. And she um, is a bean to bar chocolate maker. So this this one here, they kind of dry it some sourdough into breadcrumbs and put it with sea salt. It's an exquisite chocolate. Really, really nice. I love, that's a nice oat milk. They do Pump Street chocolate based in England. Really lovely. Um, yeah, this one was cool, really excited. I, I, excuse me if I'm really excited. I do love chocolate. But this one here, when they take the cacao beans from the cacao pod, they typically leave it to ferment. Um, and what they did here was they, they sent over a bit of their sourdough mother from the UK and allowed this to kind of go through the culture process of fermenting the cacao beans to give a more balanced, more, they say, an equilibrine or more balanced, I think, balanced um, kind of fermentation process. Really exquisite chocolate. It's called the Fermentation Project. Anyway, there you are. Bean to bar chocolate. Bean to bar chocolate. I dream of having a bean to bar chocolate shop one day. So this is part of the journey, kind of understanding the subtlety of chocolate and really enjoying it. There you are, chocolate for the win. Wish I could send you some. Uh, so before recording a podcast, I always want to feel fresh. So uh, out for just a little run to freshen up. Um, there's Daisy. We're recording a cool podcast now about strangers and the importance of talking to strangers. So I want to feel fresh and looking forward to it. So I always find exercise or running always freshens my mind and I feel in a better place to do it. So there you are. That was Total Food for the Soul there, uh, talking to this wonderful man, Joe Quijone, who just released a book about the importance of talking to strangers. It really reminded me. Yeah, about the simple, that muscle, how important it is, and how we're losing it with, with digital, you know, how phones and digital technology are making us less flex that muscle and how important and how fulfilling it can be. Now, as humans, it's been part of our evolution to talk to strangers. So anyway, check out the podcast, and that was such fun. Food for the soul. Next up on our food list, there's Naomi, there's Dave. What have we got, Dave? So, okay, these are um, vegan French toast, very tasty. Yeah. And now we're doing um, food for the soul. This is Naomi, August Beckman, a kind girl, so we're off uh, doing an Irish class or talking Irish together, which is great. This is French toast, where I'm having mushroom tea. What, what type of mushroom tea, Dave? Chaga. Chaga, so this is a functional mushroom. Shine, Naomi. Naomi's wonderful. And these are the words we're learning today. A bit, of well. a bit of caulker, so this is a what do we this chocolate is a salt chocolate salted salt caramel. caramel. One of our best selling cakes and one of our healthy ones. So there you are anyway. Mushroom team, French toast, and that and it was about four o'clock, so this would be called uh, 
Afternoon tea, really. I'll go spec making a lower tea. Uh, so in Ireland we all learn Irish in school but because of the way it's often taught there can often be a resistance or kind of like I don't want to learn Irish finally being forced this language isn't being spoken but as I've got older now 41 uh, I've learned just it's such a connection to our past our history it's, the, it's spoken on this island it's such a beautiful very romantic very poetic language and I'm back learning it and loving it August Tonchanga calling uh, so I really, really enjoyed it. So um, we've started kind of talking, you know, having once a week, we'll sit down and we'll all talk Irish and try to learn more and, you know, connect back into this and really enjoy the journey. So uh, yeah, today we had a bit of fun. Um, if, you're not aware, if you're not aware what chaga mushroom is, it's kind of a functional mushroom that kind of has many different benefits. And it's something that I think mushrooms are often seen as just a simple vegetable, but they're part of the fungus family or the fungi family, and they're just a huge superfood. So I'm fascinated with all this. Um, and we did a bit of cake, so it was a great bit of fun, good bit of laughter, a bit of friendship, and a bit of cake. I think it's great for the soul. Welcome to dinner. Welcome to my little kitchen. Um, I got a haircut. Delighted. Woo! Uh, okay, cool. Dinner. So I'm going to keep it quite light because I've been busy all day. So I'm going with some organic mixed leaves. Tofu we're going to do in the air fryer. Uh, we're going to have some of our sprouts, which we grow on our farm. These are organic alfalfa. The tub is compostable. Uh, I'm going to bake a sweet potato in the air fryer too. We're going to serve it with avocado. So if you're not sure what an air fryer, this is an air fryer. So it's like a deep, deep excuse me. Uh, so it's like a deep fat fryer, but instead of oil, it's air. So it's kind of like a mini little oven. So I just have some tofu that I've left up to kind of encourage air circulation to allow it to go crispy. Um, I have sweet potatoes and I'm going to put a bit of salt and a little tiny bit of oil in. And I literally just set it in high temperature and 10 minutes. The tofu is seared, as in it's kind of hard and crispy on, it, on each side. Sweet potatoes are looking nice and cooked. Uh, I've made a little teriyaki sauce. I'm going to pour it in on top of the, the tofu, mix it around and allow it to kind of caramelize and glaze. Uh, okay, tofu is ready. Oh, nice. And you see it's kind of nice and glistening and glazed. So I want to soak up as much of that glaze, that flavor as I can. And you see it's kind of seared nicely. There's a nice kind of goldenness to it. And that's a little tiny bit of maple syrup. I have some avocado, so I just love this type of a dinner. So we have protein, we have fat, we got some starch, we got greens, we got raw food. And now we're gonna enter the other components we're exciting. So a bit of kimchi to this we fermented only about a week ago, a little longer. But because it's warmer, it ferments a lot quicker. Um, so this is nice and bubbly and fizzy. This will add a bit of spice and fermented food to it. Then over here we have our living food. So we grow these in the farm. These are organic bean mix. So the little lads that look like tablets, that's a mung bean. And that's a little spreaded brown lentil. Uh, so I'll pop a load of them in. That's living food. Um, a little bit of alfalfa. This is a pretty, pretty lovely dinner. Very simple. This, um, a dear friend Sarah Fawcett and Harold like to eat this way. So this is, uh, this is their, their piece de resistance. And then I have some pickled onions. Just to add a little bit of acidity to the dish. Just to... Add a little bit more variety, a little bit of cucumber, et voila, there's dinner. Uh, lots of little mix mash bits, boom. Okay, there's tonight's dinner. So kimchi, there's a glazed tofu, avocado, a little bit of pear vinegar that we made. Um, sweet potato, nice little elements, really lovely. Uh, so that was my day anyway, hope you enjoyed it. Um, that's what I really eat. I always think that rather than just seeing food as what we eat, I think exercise, I think food for the body, mind and spirit is so important. So um, I had dinner with friends there, my family are away. So, um, you know, good for the soul, good for the spirit. I think food when shared is just an extra nourishing um, sense of quality to it. Um, that was delicious dinner, really light and nourishing. Um, anyway, if you've lasted this long, thanks Mel for watching it. Uh, Send them lots of love. Come join us for a swim anytime. And... Um, yeah, sure hope this was of some inspiration. Cheers, bye.